So back on the question, what's more important than money? Family. Let's simplify the answers. <laughs> right? Family is more important. Right? Relationships are more important than money. Health is more important than money. Understanding that if you have money, it could provide you better health care. Not just here, but in America too. Okay? So your faith, exactly right, is another one. Time. Time is important. More important than money. Helping others, more important than money. Right? These are things that are more important than money. We all can agree with that, right? So now that we understand what's more important, we can get on with the subject of money. Okay? We're not placing money here. We're placing money where it belongs. Money is a tool. If you're in construction, you're a carpenter, you need tools in your toolbox. Right? Money can be a tool for each and every one of you if you understand its purpose and you understand what's, why we're doing what we're doing, why we're making money. I want to talk about that because money management skills, I actually believe money management skills are one of the most valuable things you can learn in your lifetime. And most people in America have poor money management skills. Now, I believe most people in Bosnia have poor money management skills. I believe most people in Canada have poor money management skills. I believe most people in the world have more poor money management skills. Are you all with me? I've had conversations with a few of you, and uh, I've heard you say, oh yes, we know, we've heard of you people in America with debt. Okay. Okay, that's fair. Right? We don't have debt in Bosnia, right? I mean, I've heard that. I don't know if it's true. It. You do? Some people have debt? Oh, people have debt. So you do have here too? Okay, we're going to keep you from getting into that trap, hopefully, through this conversation. All right? Now, I want to talk about two broad groups of people. There are two broad groups of people when dealing with their money. The first one are spenders. Spenders. Right? And then there are savers, okay? Spenders, they sp spend money and want to spend other people's money too. Okay? A lot of times that's what these are for, spending other people's money. They have little regard for tomorrow and its needs and its demands, and they spend until they have nothing left, they spend what they don't have, cursing them to go into, causing them to go into debt, and then they become spent. Right? It's terrible. How many of y'all know who this is? Whoa, everybody knows Will Smith. He says too many people spend money they haven't earned to buy things they don't want to impress people they don't like. Actually, Will Smith didn't say that. But if I were to put his face up, you would not have known who he was. In truth, Will Smith did say that, and it went all over social media, because Will Smith loves to quote Will Rogers. Will Rogers is a person in American history that has really awesome quotes out. Just look it up on the Google. Okay. So, savers. Savers are shrewd. You know this word? I shouldn't have asked that question. Clever, yes, that's right. Right? Savers are investors. They're self-motivated and self-driven and are usually business conscious, which is important when Mike talks to you a little later. They're also goal setters. Have we, do we understand the importance of setting goals after this week, right? Okay. Savers fall into those categories. W. Clement Stone was a, a very successful entrepreneur back in the 50s and 60s. Very, very successful, very wealthy. And he says, if you cannot save money, then the seeds of greatness are not in you. So, spender or saver, I ask you, which are you? Or. <laughs> See, we had somebody who was like, saver! because it was the right answer. And then some people were afraid to answer, so they went. 
Which am I? It's okay. Because we've all... I will, I will argue that most of the adults in the room have at some point in their life struggled with the idea of saving versus spending. Is that fair to the adults? Is that... Yes. yes. Okay. So this is something we all are starting at the same place from and we need to grow from there. So, the key is save your money. Okay? It's God's 11th commandment. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> save money. <laughs> save money. Listen, this is, a, this is a common thing I hear. You were thinking it, some of you. Okay? Save money. I don't make enough money to save. Making money is an attitude. If there's something that I hope we can impress on you this week is that making money and having money is a mindset. People have a generally a scarcity mindset or an abundance mindset. Usually depends on where you come from. You know... Um, do you know what a flea is? Yeah. Probably the cats you're holding out there, fleas. <laughs> Just saying. Do you know you can train a flea? You can put a flea in a cup, yeah. and what will it do if you put it in a cup? Just fly it mounts out. But if you put a lid on that cup, it will try to bounce out. But it keeps bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. And eventually, it's not stupid, his head starts to hurt. So he starts jumping just a little bit less. You could take the lid off and that flea will remain in that cup until it dies. Oh. It's, sad. it's very sad. Tragic. Are you sure? Well, why don't you touch one? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody sure. People are the same way. People have, tr people have been trained to believe that there's this much available in the world because of their upbringing, because of where they've come from. And I understand that. But I'm here to tell all of you today there's this much in the world. We live in a world of abundance. People that have abundance. The gentleman that started this very clinic, Matthew. He didn't luck into that in order to bless us, was not gifted this to bless us. He worked hard for it. A vision. He thought big, big vision, not small vision. You with me? Yes. It's very important. <clears throat> we have a show in our country many, many years ago. It was black and white. In the 70s. Called the Beverly Hillbillies. Come listen to a story about a man named Jed. Poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. Then one day he was shooting at some food. And up from the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil that is, black gold, Texas tea. Then the first thing you know, oh, Jed's a millionaire. <laughs> Here's my point. Ain't nobody going to strike oil in your backyard. Y'all with me? Yes. You're not just going to have oil bubble. In, in other words, money just come out of the ground. You have to go fight for it. You see, I don't have enough money to save. That's where we started. Mark, I don't have enough money to save. Then go make money. It's not that easy. It's a mindset. A glass is either half full or half empty. These are not just cliches. These are the way we think. And it's important that you fight. See, there's been some wonderful discussion during this week about how to apply for a job, how to plug in, how to use a, create a resume. 
how to create relationships that can get you further. Most people in America will not take the initiative that are unemployed to do that. Most of your peers that you go to university with, they'll get a degree, but they won't take those next steps. And I don't fault them for that. I just believe it's just their thinking that needs to change. Are you all with me? So I think it's important that you go find, you know, find something. Do something for somebody so that you can receive this money, okay? But it's not in my career field. So what? Side jobs are great. And I know most of you, um, not mo I don't know most of you. Some, I know I've talked to some of you. Uh, Martha is a good example. She told me to call her Martha. She goes to school six days a week, right? Her long day is 10 hours, and there's some shorter days. But I know that becomes difficult, okay? But I do know this, no matter what your schedule is, you have to do what you have to do. You all with me? Because Jed Clampin ain't showing up at your house, shooting at some food, okay? So it may not be fun, but it can help you meet your goals. Some examples are maybe a household helper. You've heard some examples here, a caregiver, maybe tutoring somebody, right? Teaching them English, babysitting, translating. I mean, I'm just trying to give you some thoughts, but you have to create the, some of those things. Your mentor that you choose, and I know every one of you will, maybe can help bring you through this a little bit, okay?